You want me to give a little background before? Sure. Well, you know, I practiced back years ago, and typically a lawyer who was assigned a case on appeal, and typically it would be someone who had either tried the case or some lawyers were specialists, and they would put a file a motion for new trial, and they would keep up with having it filed. And back then, the, we did not have such a rapid influx of cases being presented and judges would schedule them on a regular basis. Uh, with the advent of the uh, Public Defender's Office and the advent of the mass number of cases we have to try, we schedule trial calendars, and on those trial calendars we usually have assigned cases. Each of the judges are assigned a certain number of cases per month on a rotating basis by felony level and we try to move those uh, through calendar calls. And you may remember this, but I, a number of years ago I had trial attorneys who were eager to try cases, and I remember one time we tried 25 jury trials in one year, some of them a week long or more, and then the next year 23 or 20, 22 or 23, and after that a series of cases, 18 cases to 17 cases, 16, and I've gone through a period of time when the trial calendar was not as heavy. I mention that for one reason. Our court reporters have to transcribe and take down everything that is being said in the courtroom, and they tell me that it takes four hours for every hour they're in court to transcribe that. You have to listen, review the tape, listen, and modify. Now, my court reporter is extremely qualified in that she has voice recognition and despite not having to type it, she must read it because, and I'm sure you're familiar with voice recognition, whereas you're speaking, it recognizes her voice, and what it does is it starts typing. But when she reads it, it might say that instead of he had a gun when he came at me, he had a fun when he came at me, mm -hmm. or it looked like to me he hit him with a stick. He looked like to me it was a trick. It might come back with that type of language. And also, the same thing with the charges. The words are legal words, and that voice recognition must become accustomed to that. So if you can imagine 25 cases in one year, and over a period of time, she must listen to that four hours. And many times, some of these cases are very gruesome. It takes a long time. Well, with the advent of e-filing now, we have a great deal of change that we are going through because now, Documents have to be filed electronically, including photographs, videotapes, and other documents. I mentioned that to show that there might be a backlog for many of the court reporters because they're trying to not only be in the courtroom, they're having to type the transcripts. Well, over periods of time, there have been cases that have fallen through the cracks, and we are aware of some that have happened in this circuit. But the case that came to the Supreme Court's attention was a case, I think it was an Owens case, where I think it was 2007, I might be wrong, where the gentleman in Walker County, I, I've got the case here, it might be a woman involved, I think it was a woman involved, I think it, was. it was a woman involved where uh, even the way the charge went, and she was convicted of murder, they also convicted her of manslaughter, and they've got uh, a case, uh, there's a certain rule they call it, a rule of lenity, not only that, but it means that if you, you would, where a jury convicts you of a higher level and a lower level, the humanity of the law would look toward the lower offense. Right. So you couldn't be convicted of malice murder and manslaughter by the same jury. And if there had to be a qualification, it must be done while that jury is sitting in the box. This case languished, and the Court of Appeals had over a number of times, in their opinions, mentioned the cases that had lingered and uh, tried to get the bar and the uh, courts to address these. And you are familiar with one or two in this circuit where a lawyer is dead and one is incapable of receiving the appeal. And then another lawyer that we have found was involved in the case and he had no contact with it. But the family, he married a lady while he was in prison. I can't comment on a pending case, but there is one where somebody did try to obtain other counsel and it is now being assigned to other judges to address. These things happen from time to time, but the court, Supreme Court has addressed the issue 
And in their Owen's opinion, they required the Superior Court Judges Council to address this. And they sent a copy to the Clerk's Council and to the Prosecuting Attorney's Council, if I remember correctly, from the Owen's decision. And what that requires us to do, and it requires the clerks to do, and requires the chief judge to send a report in on 30 days after January 1st of each year and 30 days after July the 1st of each year, send a report to the Supreme Court of Georgia where they will monitor each circuit as to any pending cases, the length of time that case has been pending and attempts at having motions for a new trial. Well, I am running into that same situation today because I had cases assigned for a motion for new trial today and a lawyer from another circuit did not realize that the transcript had been filed electronically in either November or December and he calls me last week, or texts me and copied the district attorney's office that he was not aware that the transcript had been filed and he could not be prepared by the day. And another one that had been assigned the case withdrew and now there's a new counsel involved. The public offenders counsel, especially when you have people that are indigent and capable of paying their own way, they are appointed to address these matters. And I think it's a needed change. I think it will hold us all accountable. But we have so many cases that we have to address jury trials, criminal cases, civil cases, domestic cases. So there's no lost motion by the judges. We're always having to address something on a regular basis. But the good part to this is now after a case is tried and a sentence is handed down, I must pass an order that day and send a, uh, in that order, set a hearing within 120 days and then have a, what's called a calendar call where we uh, uh, either in person or by cell phone uh, address the lawyers, the district attorney, and public defender and discuss their case, I think within 120 days after a verdict has been handed down and a sentence imposed, I must present a rule nice eye to the district attorney and to the public defender for a status conference within 120 days, but no less. And then after that, I must have another status conference every 180 days to determine the transcript, who the lawyers are that are representing, and those reports must be sent, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, but I must keep a record of it because eventually that will go either on the first, uh, within that report after the first 30 days or the report after July the 1st of each month. So that's uh, basically, I think, some needed change and I think it's going to uh, maintain a high level of efficiency in the appellate process going forward. 